Hey y'all, I'm the captain and this is Sailing on the Spectrum, where I talk about the challenges growing up with autism spectrum disorder. Welcome aboard. Today I want to talk about a very basic relational issue, definitely a challenge for people on the spectrum, and it is the issue of trust. You know, trust is a, a basic component in any relationship and, and just in life in general, really, if you think about it. And there might be ways in which uh, we have experienced a lot of, I guess, kind of disappointments or uh, times in which we've been misunderstood. Sometimes those encounters, those experiences, and those uh, shocks really that involve relationships with other people in your life, maybe not just in your family, but, you know, just people you encounter every day at school or growing up or, um, or maybe in, in, when you start to try to work, I mean, just, you can definitely run into a lot of negative experiences and things that kind of can easily cause one to question, uh, how much they can trust other people. But not only that also can affect how well they can trust themselves. It's like, it's important to be able to trust others, but also to trust yourself. Basically, it just ties into so many other issues because when you've uh, experienced maybe, a, you know, some sort of a, a shock or something where a person you thought maybe it may have been a friend of yours that didn't work out, you may uh, encounter, you may encounter situations where you feel like you've been kind of rebuked or scolded for, you know, who you are and how you act sometimes, you know, because we all have these quirks, these uh, areas of uh, challenges, you know, in uh, terms of interaction and human relations. That's something that people on the spectrum definitely encounter a lot. Uh, and with that backdrop of feedback, from others that you aren't really sure is necessarily all that positive, you sometimes wonder who's the who's the weak uh, link in this? Is it me or is it the other person or is it both? And if so, which is on me and which is on them? You know, so those things are kind of just can be a lot, can weigh heavy on one's mind. The development in that area has been somewhat arrested. Uh, not in the sense that I haven't been able to redeem that and haven't been able to overcome that. Uh, you know, it just means that there are ways in which I kind of have had to over learn to overcome over the years. Whereas for others, maybe uh, it's not such a deep issue with them as much. Uh, people can have trust issues for other reasons other than if they have autism spectrum disorder. There's definitely a myriad of others, other terrible experiences and traumatizing uh, backstories, you know, that may give account for a lot of that. But in my case, and in the case of those on the spectrum, I think that just kind of has its own set of baggage. You have to understand, um, I'm married, and I have a little girl, uh, certainly means that I had to have overcome some trust issues to be able to have a girl be my, have someone be my wife. And then also to, uh, I think if nothing else, maybe having a daughter definitely illustrates it in an even bigger way, just seeing the way she trusts me. You know, that's something I'd never take for granted is when I'm able to be, have things entrusted to me. And that's a good thing, but at the same time, it's important to trust myself to be a husband and a daddy and know that I'm doing all right and not feel like that just that somebody's always, you know, got an issue or that if a little issue does come up that I have to automatically snap and think that uh, I've just utterly failed. I think for me, maybe this is a one of those hangups I have. I've felt oftentimes that in relating with others, uh, and maybe those who, with whom I'm the closest, I should be always taking in their input and always my feelings and my thoughts and even my opinions ought to be suppressed. Uh, because I went through a lot of experiences where I was maligned for expressing myself. Because maybe I just 
didn't do it in a way that really was that was really met with a great deal of uh uh you know appreciation or anything sometimes there are times when others you know just easily take advantage of you if you're on the spectrum people can come on you and make you feel like that they always know better than you that so you kind of I think for me, sometimes I have that bug in my head that always seems to be saying, yeah, the other person probably knows better than you. You probably should uh, do whatever you can to please them. And you can't ever possibly, you know, have an opinion or obviously dare to admit that you differ with them. Or if you do, you ought to at least, you know, do whatever you can to deflect it. Uh, those are things that definitely distrust can definitely complicate, definitely can make the anxiety spiral it feeds off it that cycle feeds off itself the cycle of distrust and then not trusting being able to even trust yourself or value yourself um it's i wrote this down uh trying to think of the video and what i was going to say i wrote a sentence that is definitely a sad sentence but it's something i need to understand it's hard to envision others loving me for who I am. I have to understand that that may be true, and it's okay to admit that. It's okay to, I don't need to view that with shame. It's uh, one of those little hang-ups that I always had had, but I need to understand it's not something that I'm doomed to simply be ruled by. When I think about it, the more I understand, you know, if I keep thinking like that, the more insecure I'm going to get and the more I'm going to become frustrated and feel like I've got to do more to fight my way to everybody else's level, you know, so that I can finally get, you know, I guess valued. Uh, and I need to understand that there are people that, you know, there are others who, whose opinions I probably just don't need to heed. And by that, I mean, it's not that I should always view everybody else's opinion with cynicism. Like I say, I don't want to be distrustful. At the same time, I don't want to be so uh, fixed in the idea that just because somebody is not me and that they must be somebody else and they must have better ideas and a better brain for it and a better understanding of uh, the sun, the moon, and the stars, as it were, that I must just, you know, bow to whatever they think. You know, sometimes I don't even trust the future. I sometimes don't know if I'm um, doing what I ought to do in a, with my life or if I'm maybe, I don't know, just things in general, plans I make, things I dream about. You know, you sink into this guilt and shame cycle and it's just not good. It's something that can easily happen when you are giving in to distrust. What do you do? What do you do to manage the issue of distrust? I would say number one is important that you express your doubts. It's important that you express, don't suppress. That's a good motto. Express, don't suppress. I would say you are infinitely better off being honest about what doubts you have, what you are trying to ra grapple with, if it be a relational issue, if it be some other issue, like maybe an issue of faith. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna veer off topic, but let's say you have a, I don't know, some sort of a God issue, you know, that's something you need to be honest about. You shouldn't be maligned or suppressed because you express a doubt, whether it be about that or about anything. It's important to value the people in your life who let you do that and don't make you feel like you gotta, they gotta have an instant answer for everything or they don't make you feel ashamed like, oh, you're doubtful, but you don't really know what you're talking about. You need people in your life who don't do that, who just, you can talk to about it and actually those who can commiserate and sometimes, and they, even people who will express their doubts to you and lean on your input. That definitely gives a free uh, exchange. I think my wife and I really do come to a place where we are able to do that with each other. And I really value that uh, because it's important to do that with her as much as it is anybody. But I would say if you, let's say you have a hand and you're missing a finger or two on this hand and you could still count the people with 
that fit that category on one hand. If you could still count them on one hand, that's that's fine. That's really how it should be. Maybe two, three people tops in your life who really, really fit that. I'm not saying there could never, ever be another or ever be more, but, you know, it's really good to just think of those people, whoever they are, if they're in your household or if they're somebody else, just lean on them. That's a very, very powerful thing. Secondly, I would say trust your heart or at least listen to your heart. I'm not saying that you need to trust your heart and to think that in the sense that you think that, oh, I sh I'm always right and that my heart doesn't ever make a mistake. Nobody's perfect. Nevertheless, it's important to listen to your heart. I heard recently a musician I really is, in a band I really admire said something like, oh, you're really making a mistake if you think you can trick your heart. Uh, you feel like you got, and you know, something to that effect. And I think I get what he's saying. He's, you know, saying, look, you don't need to feel like your heart and that part of you really needs to just, you know, get, you know, beat down and, supp and suppressed and ignored and be treated like it's something of which you need to be ashamed or embarrassed. You need to understand that it's something that you can listen to, something you can give attention to. And when you do that, you're able to trust how it's leading you. Trust yourself enough to make decisions and to know what you ought to think. Number three, know that you have the power to choose. You have the power to choose. You can choose between, between trust or you can choose distrust. And you've got to ask yourself, is distrust really a livable, worthwhile option? If you're distrustful of everything and everybody, and, and certainly yourself, it is nothing but a deep, dark, dead-end road. It really makes life a waste. And you've got to uh, come to the conclusion that, hey, I got to trust something. I got to trust somebody. And I got to trust myself enough to know that I have the power to make decisions, to be the best that I can be, even if I'm not perfect. Even if I, others may seem to act like they know better than me, at least I've listened to enough people and I've listened to myself enough to be able to say, okay, I know where I stand. I know I can decide. I need to trust something. And as hard as it may be, as hard as it may f feel to do that uh, sometimes, it really becomes uh, less burdensome when you learn how to trust. Even if you don't do it perfectly, don't be ashamed. That's part of it. Everybody struggles. Even if you are on the spectrum and you struggle more, if you have something else in your life that makes you struggle with it more, that's okay. It's not a, it's not a cause for shame. It's not an occasion for shame and guilt. I'll just leave that for now. Uh, feel free to check out my other videos and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know how this video has helped you. And if there's anything else I could talk about that would be helpful, please let me know. Uh, this is the Captain, and I will see you on our next voyage. Bye.